Hi, I'm Chris Howard and welcome to Top of Mind. I'm taking a little break, but I wanted to come back with you now because something really important has published and that is the hype cycle for artificial intelligence. It came out a couple of weeks ago. We're gonna make the link available for you so you can, you can see it here. Uh, but of all the topics that Gartner covers, AI continues to be probably the most dominant of them all. Of course, led by generative AI, which we've all been talking about over the last you know year and a half or more, uh, which continues to also be important. But it's the whole range of AI technologies that I want to talk about here today. Now, the hype cycle, as you know, which is, is right here, and as I say, we will give you a copy uh, to, to look at. Um, is a long-standing way that we study the way the trends evolve. So there's a trigger that happens and people become interested in the technology. It reaches, reaches a peak of inflated expectations. Eventually it comes off of that peak into what's called the trough of disillusionment, where the work happens. And then eventually it might actually reach the, the plateau of productivity. Uh, and the thing about the AI hype cycle is how fast things are moving through it, partially because of the amount of investment that's been happening over the last year and a half, two years. Now, Gen AI, as you're probably feeling, generative AI is past the peak of inflated expectations and starting to go into the trough. And in all of my conversations with clients around the world, this appears to be really true. And you've heard me say before that the trough of disillusionment is not like this dark, dangerous place, but it is the place where we figure out how to make something work or not, what it is or not. So where the hard work take place, takes place, where the other dependencies are, and so on. And generative AI clearly is, is going into that place. But the acceleration of generative AI is pulling a bunch of other things along with it. And so I'm gonna look at this. So there are things that are still working their way towards hype, things like, uh, things like multi-agent systems. So it's quite early on the curve. But one of the things that we're learning right now is that one of the ways to integrate across models, say models from different providers, different major providers, are going to, that integration is going to be accomplished by agents talking to one another. So there was an announcement recently from Microsoft and from SAP about the fact that the Microsoft Copilot and Joule, which is SAP's agent, can now talk to one another to interoperate across the two different environments. We're going to see this more and more and more. And so you take a trend like multi-agent computing or agentic computing, which is another way of thinking about it or saying it, is actually going to accelerate pretty quickly because the need is there. But I also want to point out that there are a number of things that have reached that plateau of productivity already. Things like computer vision. So long discipline of mature work there. Computer vision is key to multimodal generative AI, but it itself as a, as a part of AI is very mature and already productive. Other things like knowledge graphs are hitting that, that plateau of productivity uh, and so on. There was an interesting question when we posted this on LinkedIn a little while ago, the, the hype cycle itself. Somebody asked, well, don't things ever go away off the hype cycle? Yes, they do. Sometimes when something goes up through the trigger and across the peak of inflated expectations and hits the drop, it never comes out. <laughs> so it does happen. And we make that assessment regularly to say, did this technology go away? Was it obsolete or did it fold into something else? And I expect some of that to happen with the AI hype cycle as we go along. So let's talk again about this trough of disillusionment and, and what's happening specifically as it relates to AI. One of the things that many of you have experienced is that getting accuracy using the RAG method, which is the retrieve, augment, and generate, that method is not as easy as, as you think it might be. It takes a lot of work to engineer the props and so on. So that's a good example of where the work got harder as we started to, to experience it. Other things, it's sort of harder to scale. So you know, building out infrastructure and getting the data, especially to work in a horizontal way or a scaled way, takes a lot of effort, not only technically, but also culturally for change management to get people sharing and thinking about using data in that kind of a way as it integrates with these systems. Um, the other thing that we're seeing is generative AI, again, super dominant as the leading trend here, being misapplied. So the idea that generative AI can do things that classical AI is actually really better at doing, and that dissonance happens and you say, well, why aren't I getting the results that I expected from this? Well, probably it's because of being applied in the wrong way. We published a note a couple of months ago around when not to use generative AI that I would point you to because that's actually a really way, a good way of sort of gut checking, sanity checking, uh, whether you're using it for the right purposes or not and keep you from, from making some of those mistakes. One of the other aspects about the trough of disillusionment that's classic is the complexity is right on the surface. Like things haven't 
collated yet or become easier to use or they're not baked into platforms yet or the market is confusing. All of these sort of complexity, uh, the things about complexity at the surface is a characteristic of the trough of, of disillusionment. Uh, there's a, a quote that I love, a Donald, old Donald Norman quote, which is, things get easier to use by becoming more complex inside. And so this idea of balancing complexity and simplicity is one I've also been thinking about a lot lately because things feel really complex now. And what are those things that we can do to simplify and how much simplification can we expect? So on the AI hype cycle, clearly things are accelerating within the AI space itself. But the other thing that we're looking at is what else is accelerating as a result? And what are the forces causing that to happen? Well, let me take you through one that we've talked some about before, but starting to see more and more effort being placed here. We know that training foundation models, those big you know, trillion parameter models, takes a lot of energy. Uh, it is hard on the environment. Uh, and you know we're going to run out of power, honestly, by 2030 is what the projection says, if, unless we find better ways to do this, this compute. And so what's happening as a result is more innovation like in the chips themselves, something like neuromorphic computing. So a neuromorphic chip is something that, you know, it's a small, very, very small footprint, but very extremely powerful chip that could be put into a phone, could be put into a pacemaker, could be put on the edge anywhere and do some of the things that AI does and interact with the environment in that way. Very low power requirements there, but lots of compute power logic outcomes that you can get from that. Now, this is an emerging technology, but it's one that's going to move really, really quickly because the demand to solve the energy problem is really high, but also the desire to use the intelligence of machine learning at lots of different places in the environment, like inside our body or in the phone or you know, wherever you might place it, is also really high because those are the types of use cases that you know, the companies have. So that's being pulled forward. I have a team that's looking at the future of computing. Uh, in fact, I just came off a call where we were talking about sort of, you know, what's that story? How is it going to take shape? And actually, we'll use it at our IT symposium series in the fall uh, on, on stage to talk about what do we see as the three horizons of the future of computing. I'll talk about that in, in a future episode. But there's a lot going on there being driven by the fact that AI is accelerating so much and there's so much investment. The last thing that I'll say about the hype cycle investment and things moving fast uh, is that there will be a lot of waste, right? There'll be a lot of loss. There will be investments that you make that don't pay off. Again, that's just a feature of implementing a new technology and finding out the space within it, which it works and what's the fit and the skills and so on. But eventually what happens as things become more productive is that momentum starts to build. It takes less investment to get more results. And we're not there yet but we are moving there pretty quickly. And so I would love to hear from you ways that you are using AI, the whole stack of AI, to produce results that are really material and not just small and incremental, something that is a step change in what you're doing. So the AI hype cycle, things are moving really quickly. I suggest you look at it because of a bigger picture of the whole AI landscape. And we'll talk more about it in episodes to come. Thanks for joining and we'll see you next time.